What's up guys and welcome back to my dungeon. I'm preparing a $500 gaming budget build. But I have two candidates for the task. The AMD Ryzen 5 1600AF paired with a MSI B450M and this one, the Intel Core i3 1900F paired with a Gigabyte B365M. In this video, I will go through a quick overview of this specific combo. I will explain you why I picked this motherboard, why I picked this CPU. We will go through some important BIOS settings and a quick uh, overclocking guide. So, let's get started. This motherboard is around $59, but I didn't pick this model only for the price. Other than that, even if we have a VRM section that is pretty small and simple, we have LLC. What is LLC? LLC stands for Load Line Calibration and is a circuit that uh, provides a stable voltage under load to the CPU and is very important even for a mild overclocking. The VRM section is a 3 plus 2 uh, noise sink and honestly it makes me a bit uncomfortable but uh, we will see how the test uh, will give us as a result. MSI claim that this board supports the Ryzen 9 3950X. Well, I might try to put it on this board and do a thermal image scan of the VRM and see how hot they can get, but uh, I won't recommend it to be used with a 3950X or even an 8-core. Another important thing about this board is the presence of the HDMI out. This means that if you have a Ryzen APU, you can connect your FreeSync display and benefit from the variable refresh rate. Before I start with the BIOS settings, I have to spend a couple of words about this CPU. You may think that uh, is a Ryzen first generation, but uh, the AF model, the stepping AF, it is not a first generation. Actually, is a Ryzen 5 2600 undercover. The CPU is a 12 nanometers, so you have a slightly better IPC and uh, more overclocking headroom. The BIOS is quite simple, but it has everything you need to squeeze uh, all the performance you can out of the CPU. Let's uh, check uh, the advanced mode with the F7 key. Usually the first thing you have to do is to go to the XMP profile and enable. In this case we have the Ballistic uh, Sports LT 2600 and we are going to select the profile number 2. Usually by setting the XMP profile is the only thing that you really need uh, if you want to play in a full HD that's 60 Hz uh, or 75 Hz. But the good thing about this platform and the AMD CPU is that you can do some overclocking and gain a bit of performance here and there. To do that is quite simple. Just uh, set the CPU ratio to let's say 39, so it's 3.9 GHz, and the voltage, which is down here. You can use the override mode, so you can set a fixed voltage, or the offset. The offset will change the behavior of the voltage and you can add to the default voltage to sustain uh, an overclocked uh, CPU frequency. In this case, I'm going to use the override mode since it is the easiest to set in the system. Once you select override mode, you have to go down here and type uh, the value you want, in this case 1.2. I don't recommend to go any higher with the stock cooler since uh, this is more or less the maximum I was able to get this CPU with uh, the stock cooler. That in fact uh, isn't bad but uh, you are limiting the OC potential of the CPU. If you have a better cooler or an only one you can push the CPU to 4 GHz or 4.1. Uh, if you are lucky, 4.2. But uh, if you are building a system with the CPU and for the, at the moment you are going to use the stock cooler, try to set this one. So, 39 CPU ratio and 1.2 volts. Now, let's talk about load line calibration. You have to go down here, digit all power, and you find the LLC right here in the first. I test all the modes and uh, Honestly, I found that the, the auto is the best one. And now I'll show you why. At this point, it have 10, so 7 exit, enter and boot into Windows. When you overclock your system, 
The best way to understand if it's stable or not is to run a stress test. In this case, I'm using IDA64 stability test set uh, with the stress FPU. FPU is, uh, is a very hard test, not as Prime95, that in my opinion is unrealistic, but uh, this one is, is a good test to understand if uh, with the normal workloads, the system is uh, stable and with a good uh, temp. So now, as you can see, we have 1.2 volts, 3900 megahertz, and we start the stress test. Take a look uh, at the voltage. With a chip board, usually there's no load line calibration, and if you set 1.2, you can lose uh, as well 50, 60, 70 millivolts. So you set something and that under load, the system drop the voltage and usually the overclock is less stable. And sometimes you can run the stress test and suddenly after five minutes, there's a big voltage drop and you crash. In this case, we can sustain 1.2 volt sharp in this case. And so if we set something, the system will stay at that voltage and the overclock will be stable. Or if you find that the overclock is not stable, but the voltage is stable, it means that you need more voltage or to lower the clock. One thing to keep in mind is the temperature. So keep under control the temperature. The ideal for a Ryzen CPU is more or less 84, 85 degree with a stress test like this. So if you can stay below 84 degrees, you will have no issue at all during gaming or normal workload like rendering or whatever. So if your temperature is uh, raising and going above 84 degree, I suggest you to take like 100 megahertz out of the clock and uh, as well lower the voltage a bit, like 25 millivolts or 50 millivolts and try again. Obviously, uh, it's better to do at baby step. So you can try this that more or less every CPU should do like this. But who knows, maybe your room is hot and uh, you need uh, to lower the frequency to 3800 and the voltage like 1.15 or something. So as I mentioned before, this stock cooler is not great for overclocking, but you can achieve uh, 3900 megahertz uh, with uh, a decent voltage. And we are like 878, maybe you can go at up to 80, 81, but it's okay. If you want to, to push the CPU a bit more, I suggest you to, to change uh, the stock cooler for uh, an all one or a good air cooler. Now it's time to talk about memory. This is a screenshot that I took the other day when I was uh, testing the Ballistic uh, Sports LT, the eight gigabyte kit. So two stick, four gigabyte each, 266 uh, megahertz. And well, in this case, uh, the limit uh, was the memory kit since I was able to overclock it at 3200 MHz C14. And the result is quite awesome because it's a, a, a kit that was like 39 euro so, or, or even less I paid. So it's a very inexpensive kit that you will see in the budget build. And uh, again, this motherboard can do much more because uh, with the Ryzen uh, 3600 and the 3600X, I test them both, I was able to achieve the Oli grade 3800 megahertz with the Fiber 1.1 and CAS 16 with a sports uh, ballistic LT, the 3200 megahertz C16, 16 gigabyte kit. So with this motherboard, you can really push the limit of the IMC of the CPU. I bet you're wondering how to do it. I did a lot of uh, Ryzen DRAM calculator uh, guide, but if you're lazy and you don't want to check my previous video, here is how you can do it. Uh, so for this specific uh, motherboard and CPU, you have to set Zen Plus. So remember, it's not uh, uh, the first generation Ryzen, it's a second generation, so Zen Plus. And then uh, select your type of memory. In my case, it's a Micron e uh, We can You can start at 3200 MHz, it should be enough if you have uh, the right memory kit. And keep in mind that this board is a dual slot. So in this menu, don't set B450, but set dual slot. You can start by safe, and then you enter in the BIOS or the safe. And if it's stable, you can try to push a bit higher 
and set the fast. So the safe, uh, as you can see, is CAS 16 and the fast is CAS 14. Keep in mind that I reach the 3200 megahertz C14 with a higher voltage. I think it was like 1.45, but now we are going to check it. And for that, you better have a good airflow inside the case because this memory can get a bit hot. And if it goes like 45, 50 degrees, it start giving you errors. So check before to set the profile in fast that you have a good airflow in your chassis. So now I suggest you to take a mobile phone, make a picture of the settings and go into the BIOS. Now that you are into the BIOS, to access uh, the memory tweakings, press F7, go into the OC menu, and uh, you can set the XMP profile first, then restart, and again. Now, F7, go into this mode, and advanced DRAM configuration. Now you have everything you need to set that uh, DRAM calculator told you to set. So start with the first one, then go into the sub timing, change everything, turn around timing as well. Now for to make the things easier, I'm going to load the profile that uh, I saved. Another important thing is when you find something that is stable before stepping up the clock of the memory or going with a tighter timings configuration, save the profile and then you can start from there because maybe if you can, if you are not stable with the profile you are using, uh, it's good to have a, let's say a checkpoint that you can restore and find a stable configuration and then work your way up from there. So now I'm going to show you how I set this motherboard with the Crucial Ballistic 8 gigabyte kit. So here, the run frequency 3200 MHz. Now, regarding the voltage, I told you that I was higher than 1.4. In fact, I'm 1.47. Uh, this is not really a safe voltage, but, uh, well, you can try if you want to overclock this specific kit uh, with this motherboard and this timing set. Uh, keep in mind that you really need a good airflow because at 1.47 uh, is getting a bit hot. So usually to do that, I I make sure that uh, the motherboard and the RAM are properly ventilated. Otherwise, if you know a safer one, just type the safe profile and you can use that profile. So it gives you more peace of mind. Anyway, uh, so one point. 47 volt here, VDDP 1.1, shock voltage 1.05. Here, well, I was using liquid cooling, so my CPU is set at 4 gigahertz and 1.3 volt, but this is independent from the memory overclocking. And then you go into advanced DRAM configuration, and you can see here the timing I used to set this specific kit with this motherboard. And as you can, as, as you've seen, is pretty stable. So now I scroll you the settings uh, slowly, so you can copy paste if you want, if you have the components and you want to try. And keep in mind that you have to set everything correctly, because if you skip uh, some settings, you might have uh, no boot. So. You have to reset the CMOS and try again. So make sure, double check that everything is set as the DRAM calculator told you to set. If something goes wrong that you don't have a boot, you can try to restart with the same settings. And uh, for example, you can try to lower this one like 60. Usually if it's not working with 53, try 60 because uh, first generation, second generation Ryzen, have a different proc ODT. And usually is 53 is enough for 3200 megahertz, but as well, if you have errors, try to change this one to 60 before doing anything else. If it's not working, try some voltage. As well, you can set this one. So the cut the cut bus driver. 
the cat bus drive, sorry. And again, if it's not working with 20, try with 24, 24, 24, or the alternative that the Ryzen digital calculator suggests you. In my case, the stable was 20. So set everything, double check, F10, save and exit, and remember to check the memory before you do your usual stuff, gaming, whatever. So uh, in Ryzen Direct Calculator, you find the tab for the memory testing. Uh, if you don't know how to use it, check my previous video. Now you don't have to be lazy. Go and check uh, the countless video I made about the RAM overclocking and do a proper test. At least uh, one hour or two hours. I suggest you, if you have time, to leave the PC overnight because if it can go overnight and is still stable, probably you won't have any crash at all. It's, it's very important, especially if you play online. It's better to have uh, a slightly less in memory clock, but full stability. All right, guys, for today, that's it. And the next one will be about the Intel counterpart. And the video after that will be a very detailed benchmarking session of the two platforms, so you can decide what I'm going to put into the 500 gaming budget build. Now, as always, you know what to do. Leave a comment if you have any question or join my Discord server. Like the video if you like it, subscribe for more, and see you in the next one.